This is a data color spider. Now I just happen to have the elite edition here. So that's the one right there that you can see. So the elite edition of the data color spider has the ability to do display analysis, which means it's going to be able to tell you if that display has the right color, what the brightness, peak brightness, all of the other settings are on it. So the Data Color Spider Elite lets you go to that level. Now, if you have multiple displays and you wanna match those displays, maybe they're from different vendors, I've had that where the whites don't look right across two different monitors and it's really annoying. If you want to do that and get those perfect, you can use the studio match feature of the Elite. Now, if you just have one monitor that you're doing production on, there is the Data Color Spider X Pro. So there's the Pro and the Elite. Now, what's funny is they look absolutely identical. And in my opinion, the hardware is absolutely identical in between these two. So you are not getting any variance or any difference at all, regardless of which one you actually use. Um, but the software and the licensing is more expensive on the Elite. It has more features, obviously, so that's how they get the, get you there. If you're just mo uh, calibrating one monitor, the Pro has the exact same features from a calibration perspective for a single monitor and it'll get you there. The Elite is gonna do a lot more. I will run you through the software and we're gonna take a look at it. <laughs> so the first things first, we would have to install the software. I've gone ahead and done that. The software in this case is actually called uh, the Spider X Elite. You can test the gamut. Okay, so that's how, how colors are saturated here. Tone response is gonna be if the uh, contrast ratio of the monitor across different brightnesses and different gray levels is correct. Brightness and contrast, which is really good when you're testing to see if a monitor really pops, if it has that high peak brightness. White point at different OSD settings, screen uniformity, and then lastly, color accuracy. Those are the main ways that we test these monitors here. So the Data Color Spider can do all that. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna actually be picking on the screen here, um, you know, a point, and we're gonna put the sensor on that point. We're gonna check the gamut, we're gonna check the tone response, brightness contrast. I'm not gonna do white point at different settings, but I am gonna do color accuracy. Screen uniformity doesn't matter to me so much on this panel, it's actually been really good so far from what I've seen. And then we're gonna get this that's telling us to put the spider unit on the screen. Now what's neat is the unit itself splits into two pieces here. So you can see I've split it into two pieces, and it fits over the top of the back of the monitor and the weight of it helps hold it against the monitor. I'm gonna hit okay. Now, normally these come from the factory in eco mode. I've turned that off. I went to the, the user preset mode, so there we go. Now it's gonna go on to the next one. Um, do you wanna have calibrated different settings? No, we're not gonna deal with that. We're gonna deal with the default gamma setting. It does have different gamma settings that you can check. It's, what it's doing now is it's looking for that color curve, or sorry, that brightness curve. So some monitors, you know, may be really dark, you know, uh, some may be really bright, and some just may look off. That can often be the gamma and having a difference there. So we're gonna do the brightness contrast test. Now we're gonna put this in the center. The brightness contrast test is kind of funny. So what it's gonna do is at different uh, set levels, it's going to flash back and forth and give us the contrast ratio as well as the brightness in one test here. So I'm gonna go into the menu system and what I've noticed with this is if I just pick and I choose the brightness, it's gonna keep the backlight up and the brightness is gonna adjust uh, and it's not gonna give a good measurement. So I'm actually gonna adjust the backlight which is more accurate for this test. So I'm gonna bring the backlight down to zero which is reducing the brightness to zero and then you're gonna notice something right away. So I'd say measure this and now it's gonna flash two times and it's checking to see the brightness and contrast at that. Now it's gonna ask me to go up to 25. And then I'm gonna measure that again. So that's at 25% brightness. What's funny is my camera, this is gonna get so bright, my camera's gonna be completely washed out. So I'm gonna go up to 50%. This monitor has incredible brightness. Now let's talk about some of the things that maybe people were critical of. The monitor does not have a lot of adjustability in the stand. Now we're gonna check the color accuracy. There's a 12, 24, and 48 color uh, checking ability. I'm gonna bring this back down to about 80% backlight because I don't wanna test that saturation at such a high backlight. So we're gonna do that. And now what it's doing is it's gonna flash different colors here. My camera is gonna be all thrown off because it's going through all of the different ranges of colors that it knows. So it's looking at a specific color. It's asking the monitor to display that color. 
and then it's going to come back and tell us how close the monitor was to that standard default color. The neat thing about this is even if the monitor is off a little bit in certain directions, it can actually calibrate that by using a profile for your monitor. So what did we see as a result on this? Well, the monitor, if you see up in the top in the green, it does 100% of sRGB. So for print work, it's going to be great. So if you look at the gamma curves here, it's got gamma 1.8 and gamma 2.2, what it should be. The data color says it's exactly at 2.2, except down here on the uh, low end of brightness. So it's kind of crossed over a little bit, but if we go look in the, in the on-screen display, we may see exactly what gamma setting it's set to. At 100% brightness, this thing's putting out 450 nits. That's an incredible amount for a budget monitor. Incredible amount here for an IPS, so it's very bright. That's one of the problems that uh, IPSs don't usually do well in very bright rooms. They don't have a lot of peak brightness, but they have really great color. So it's kind of a give and take. And also contrast here comes out about 800 to one. Uh, the contrast ratio on IPS is usually is about 1000 to one. So this is right in that result space that we were expecting. Color accuracy. So now here was the results of the color accuracy test. And this was what the other person noted. They said, hey, you know, so it's got a, a, an average here of two. But they noted that even though some colors are here very low, some of those primaries were actually way off up in the uh, fours, it looks like. 